All right, here's an incomplete review of unit G. All right, so let's start out with this. Remember to pause. Remember our deal. You're going to pause it whenever I ask you a question and try and get it yourself first. Okay, so we have a, a mass of a sun, or a star rather, and a mass of a planet, and the planet's orbiting with a radius r. Can you try and give me what the angular momentum is? of this star in terms of ms, r, the mass of the planet, and any constants. Okay, I'll see you in a little bit. All right, we're back. Okay, so the angular momentum of this star is gonna be r cross p. And so that's gonna equal r cross p. And if you look, r is perpendicular to p. r is this way and P is this way. So it's just R times P. So it's going to be R times P. Now P is MV. It's the mass of the planet times V. Okay, well I didn't give you V. And so what we need to do is we need to find V. Now you find V by going um, A equals F net over M. and v squared over r, because it's going in a circle. Uh, let's make this um, a capital R here. mv squared over r is equal to capital G, mass of the sun, mass of the earth, uh, mass of the star, mass of the planet rather, um, divided by the distance between them squared. That's the force divided by now this is the A of the planet equals the net force on the planet divided by the mass of the planet. That's the one that's going around, that's circling. And so we can get rid of the mass of the planet, get rid of one of these R's. It looks like V is the square root of G M S over R. So I'm just going to write that in here. So it's G mass of the star all over R square root it. So that's how you get the angular momentum of a planet. It's r cross p, where p is mass times velocity. All right, next one. I have here um, an ellipse. Um, this is the near point of the ellipse. That's the far point of the ellipse. Let's say this is the Earth, and this is a satellite going around the Earth. And that's the, this is the close by side is the perigee and this is the apogee. Um, all right, so um, let me ask you some questions. Um, of A, D, B, or C, which one of these um, actually has an, a centripetal acceleration? Which one of these actually has a centripetal acceleration? Okay, go ahead and um, pause. Okay, it turns out they all have a centripetal acceleration. A, D, B, and C. Because they're all, when something has a centripetal acceleration, it's changing its direction. And each one of these, it's changing its direction. Okay, um, could you tell me which case does this, is the centripetal acceleration the greatest? In which of these is the centripetal acceleration greatest? Go ahead and pause. Okay, we're back. Okay, it's greatest at A. It's greatest at A. And here's why. Um, the force on this is the greatest here. This is the biggest force. This is the smallest force, so it has the smallest A centripetal. And then this is the next biggest and oh, I drew that one a little too big here. How about right there? Okay, so because this one has the most um, force in the radial direction, that has the biggest centripetal acceleration. Okay, could you tell me which ones of these, A, D, B, or C, has the most tangential acceleration? Uh, let me change that question. Which ones of these, which ones of these do not have a tangential acceleration? Okay, 
So that's the question. Which of these do not have a tangential acceleration? Go ahead and pause. Okay, we're back. Um, a tangential acceleration is what causes it to change speed. And if you look, um, when it's in this position, it's moving this way. If it's moving this way, but the net force is this way, then it's not changing its speed. It, it has no tangential. So no tangential at A. A tangential is zero. Uh, there's no tangential acceleration at B. All the force is this way. The velocity is this way. When they're perpendicular, it's not gaining or losing speed right, right at that point. A little later on it will be, but not at that point. At D and C, it has tangential acceleration. So it has tangential acceleration at D and C. Okay, my next question, we're going to skip the gravitational force question. Um, which ones, at which location, A, D, B, or C, is the angular momentum the, the biggest? At which of those locations is the angular momentum, L, the biggest? Go ahead and... Go ahead and um, Pause. Okay, it turns out that the angular momentum is the same for all those. A, D, B, and C. The angular momentum is the same for each of these. And that's because um, there is no net torque on this system. Like the torque right here, the force is this way. And the lever arm is this way. So there's no torque. And so if there's no net torque, therefore L equals L prime. The L doesn't change. Okay. Can you tell me in which case A, D, B, or C, where does it have the biggest, uh, the most amount of total energy? When does it have the most total energy, A, D, B, or C in this orbit? Okay, go ahead and pause. Okay, the answer is that it has the same energy at A, D, B, and C. The energy is conserved in an orbit. The total energy is conserved. So angular momentum is conserved, and so is um, the total energy conserved. Okay, could you tell me where it's got the most kinetic energy? A, D, B, or C. Where does it have the most kinetic energy? Okay, that would be at its near point. It has its most kinetic energy here. It has the least potential energy here and the most kinetic energy there. So it's going the fastest. You can think of new, uh, Kepler's second law that it's it, it's got to go faster to sweep out the same area there as out here if this is a month then this has to be a month and those areas have to be the same according to kepler's second law and so um, it's going faster here and so it's got the most kinetic energy okay hey here's a circular orbit it's going at a speed v um, around this, around the this satellite's going at a speed v around this uh, planet. If I were to decrease the velocity by ten percent, you know what the path would be. If right at this point I decrease this this speed by ten percent, can you give me an estimate of the direct that the the actual path it will take? Okay, I'll see you in a little bit. Go ahead and pause. Okay, it will take this path. If you decrease it, if you remember the lab, it, it's going to go like this and go in um, an ellipse. It will no longer be a circle, it will go in ellipse. Okay. Let's go on to the next one. Actually, we're going to take a break here. We'll see you at the next video. Thanks.